Hello everybody and welcome here. It's a little bit of a different setting as you're used to see in my videos. I'm sitting here behind my desk at my computer, at my desktop computer, and that has a reason. Uh, July, August is coming, the holiday season here for the kids. But I would like to use that time to level up the things we're doing here at Authentic Sound. You know that the channel has been refocused uh, last year, in fact, from just, a, I would say, a, a channel that promotes, so to say, or just shares my fascination for the clavichord, and I will be unchanged for, the, for my entire life, I can promise you that. But a little bit more towards a kind of research platform, if I may say so, in which I share with you my findings on temporary construction, performance practice related things like that. And the reaction of all of you is very positive. I am really happy with that. The channel grew a lot based on that. In fact, people are actually, if I read the statistics, are waiting for that and also read your comments. But we come to a moment where as much as I like making those Wednesday videos every week, they take, in fact, a lot of my time, which is no problem. It's what I like to do. Sharing that with you is actually a privilege. Some of those videos, they reach 5,000 views in less than a week. I mean, what a huge audience is that to talk to? Um, so I'm not complaining here. But reading your questions um, over the time, over the months, um, also having had the honor here of uh, visits from pianists and musicians that came to me to ask more information on this temporary reconstruction thing and wanted to participate, in fact, which is the most, um, uh, the, the best thing of it all, to collaborate with other musicians, even with you. you. Many of you have sent me information that you found and it's all welcome. The question comes to come with a kind of comprehensive writing that teaches you and the musicians that visited me or that reached out to me how to read notation in the way I do or how exactly is this historical reading of the metronome? How can we put it in an historical context? So I was talking to Anya and said, so we have to level up. Not only Authentic Sound has is now a recording label, here's the Pachelbel disc that just have been finished. It will be sent out in a few days, but, and still available by the way. <laughs> But not only are we a recording label, but connected to that, there is something that we set into motion that we need to level up. I need to write some ebooks, some articles, for instance, on the historical use of the metronome. Very simple, not 50 pages, but just three pages in which I give you the very short summary of what I believe uh, led to that reading of the metronome. On the other hand, I would like to write an ebook more extensively, 50, 60 pages, I don't know, of course, with musical examples and, and scores, in which I practically guide you the way I just practice that music. I forget about the theoretical background, just from a practical standpoint. I open the Mozart score, what do I see? How do I practice? And in order, I can, I can of course give live streams, I can, give, I can make videos on that, but presenting you or giving you the possibility of reading that in an ebook or maybe in the future a printed book, who knows, uh, that you really can work day by day and seeing in a very detailed way the way I do that, the way I read the score, uh, without a necessity to, for everything I say, give you the proof. Another project could be a more elaborated version of that article on the metronome historical use. Just give um, 20, 30 pages of in-depth talking on the historical context around that so that everybody who wants to dive into that, but to the outside world, if you do that, I know what happens. People will say, hey, can you prove that? That's nonsense. That's just, no, that you have something in your in your hand, I would say, that you can read and say, this I can use. So in the summer months, you might see some changes on the channel. From September, certainly October on, the channel will be back to normal and will be maybe a little bit redesigned towards um, a format where also live stream is a big part of this. Once the studio will be there, 
and I hope to have it next year, but it's a major decision. Also financially, you can understand that. We have tons of more possibilities for live streams and for more interaction. That's sometimes difficult here. We are making videos in our living room and certainly in the summer months, the kids are here and I, they uh, pay attention enough to their uh, crazy father making all those videos and practicing and things like that. So I don't want to put a burden any on top of that to them. So summer months, if you don't see a video popping up on Wednesday or Friday, don't panic, but just think Wim is working on his ebooks, his writing. That's it, guys. Um, let me know what you would like to see in that and what you actually would like me to write. That's always interesting for me to read. If you really want to stay on top of that, besides a Patreon, there's also the email list. Every Wednesday, you get an overview of what happens on the channel and if there is something extra, I'll address it also in the email list. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And we certainly see each other a lot of time in, this, in these summer months. Bye.